95. The World Wide Web explodes in popularity and content, and Amazon.com makes its debut. O.J. Simpson is acquitted of murdering his ex-wife and her friend after a controversial 10-month trial, and the UPN and WB networks go on the air. But there are also major developments in the world of computing. Sun unveils the Java programming language. IBM pays $3.5 billion for Lotus Development Corporation, and Microsoft launches new subsidiaries in Slovenia, the Philippines, Slovakia, Panama, Guatemala, and the People's Republic of China. And on January 7, 1995, during his first keynote at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, Bill Gates announces Microsoft Bob for Windows. Bob is designed to provide the essential tools for home computing in eight interconnected programs that help users organize, communicate, and play with their computers through a new design called the Social Interface. On March 14, Microsoft announces Microsoft Schedule Plus for Windows 95, an upgrade to be incorporated into Microsoft Office for Windows. Now this new version is scheduled to be available shortly after the release of Windows 95 through standard retail outlets as a standalone product or as part of the forthcoming release of Microsoft Office. Later that month on March 22nd, Microsoft and DreamWorks SKG announce that they have signed a joint venture agreement to form a new software company. The company will produce interactive and multimedia entertainment properties. And on June 16th, the U.S. Court of Appeals reinstates a 1994 antitrust settlement between Microsoft and the Justice Department that was rejected by U.S. District Judge Stanley Sporkin in February of 1995. Later in June, Microsoft announces the shipment of Microsoft SQL Server 6.0. SQL Server 6.0 is a scalable, high-performance DBMS designed specifically for distributed client-server computing. But most importantly, August 24, 1995 turns out to be the biggest day of the year for Microsoft, when Microsoft Windows 95 and Office 95 are made available worldwide. The launch is celebrated in a variety of colorful ways. In Sydney, a giant balloon floats in the harbor while dancers perform in the streets. In New York, the Empire State Building is bathed in the colors of the Windows 95 logo. In London, Microsoft pays for 1.5 million copies of the London Times, all containing a Windows 95 advertising supplement to be given out for free. And in Toronto, Microsoft hangs a giant banner of the Windows 95 logo on the CN Tower. Then a rappel team leaps off the tower equipped with portable computers running the software. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the launch of Windows 95. You know, I can't believe what an incredible product this is. You know, before, before I met Bill Gates, I knew almost nothing about computers. He was kind enough to lend me one, this beautiful 1975 Altar 8800. This thing has a worse memory than Rosa Lopez. The nice thing about it, though, you can put 20 phone numbers in it, and within 45 minutes, call any one of them back just like that. Pretty hey, amazing stuff. Jay. But let me tell you about something really incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Leno. Hey! Thank you! Thank you, thank you! Thank you! Welcome, Microsofties. Nice to have you all here. As you know, I'm host of The Tonight Show on NBC, which stands for Now Bill Compatible. <laughs> Actually, I'm here to tell you about uh, this Windows 95 thing. Fine, let me give you an idea. Give me an idea how powerful Windows 95 is. It is able to keep track of all of OJ's alibis at once. Pretty amazing <laughs> stuff. The sleeping limo driver, the golf game, it's all in there. It's all in there. You know, Bill has done so much to market Windows 95. You know, when I first met with Bill, and I kind of questioned his initial idea, that's why I was brought into the project. I said, Bill, you know, you're smart, you're a genius, but is Amway really the way to go? You know, I, it didn't feel right to me, and of course, I, I was brought into the project. Now, the reason I was chosen for this job, I'm, uh, I'm not really computer literate. I, I should explain that right now. This is sort of a My Fair Lady thing. He's Rex Harrison. I'm going to be the Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> when I first got a sophisticated piece of electronic equipment, you know, I never forget, it took me like two hours just to read the directions. It took me another two hours to get the thing, you know, totally hooked up. And of course, that was just the clapper, all right? So that'll give you some idea, basically, <laughs> basically where I'm coming from. 
Let's welcome the chairman of Microsoft. Listen to this. This is a man, a man so successful, his chauffeur is Ross Perot, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Bill Gates and the Bill Gates Dancers. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you're making excuses for us. But, but the truth is, we decided to take the extra nine months in order to test Windows 95 thoroughly and make sure it met the highest quality standards. We wanted people to be able to appreciate how Windows 95 makes computing faster, easier, and more fun. All right, now see, this is the part that worries me. It was faster, easier, more. See, I'm. I'm kind of a computer virgin here, Bill, and <laughs> as we go through this, I hope you'll be gentle, I hope you'll be kind, <laughs> all right? Well, Windows 95 is so easy, even a talk show host can figure it out. Oh, 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 oh my. Why don't you show us how to demo it? Oh, well, no, 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 I'll do that. You know, for the past couple of months, I've, I've had Windows 95 running on a computer in my office. I've been trying out, seeing what I can do, you know. And I have big news, folks. I haven't broken it, and I figure if I can use it, anybody can pretty much use this thing. That's great, but I want you to show us how to use it. Since you're such an expert, show us some of your favorite features. Uh, favorite features. What are you saying, Bill? I, I don't know how to do this. You're saying maybe I can't uh, handle this little computer thing? Maybe I don't have the guts to kind of make it work? I think we paid you enough. You should do the demo. <laughs> yeah. no, no, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, sometimes these big CEOs, they uh, get a little out of touch with the product. So let's go to square one. Let's go back to the basics, and exp I'll explain it for you. All right. And again, for some of the uh, laymen out there. Uh, this here is the mouse. This is the mouse. You move that around. Uh, this here is the mouse tail. This will uh, send all the uh, main mouse information to the uh, main mouse hutch in here, where <laughs> most of the uh, mouse equipment is... is kept with the other mice. It's all in the... This is your main mouse area, essentially, <laughs> right here. I'm, I'm getting a little worried that you really don't know much about Windows 95. No, 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 no. I'll show you, I'll show you. See, what I really like is everything you need to do, I can do uh, right from the start button here. You see that? Look at that, Bill, huh? Huh? Boom, right there. You got start. Everything's here under the program menu. See, if I want to add new programs, just pop up to there. Boom, there you go. Programs right there. See, one... Very, very simple. Also on August 24th, Microsoft announces the availability of MSN, the Microsoft Network. MSN includes full internet access and offers a variety of content, communities, and services from more than 200 companies and 100 content experts. And all the hype pays off. Just five days later on August 29th, Microsoft estimates that more than 1 million copies of Windows 95 were purchased by customers at retail stores during the first four days of the release. But Microsoft isn't ready to stop innovating. On September 18th, Sidewinder 3D Pro, a digital optical joystick, is announced. And then two days later, the Chinese State Bureau of Technology Supervision and the Chinese Ministry of Electronics Industry sign an agreement with Microsoft to standardize the Chinese version of Windows 95 as a software development standard for the People's Republic of China. And sales incentives abound when on October 2nd, Microsoft offers more than 30 titles of its family of home software products for under 50 bucks each. On October 2nd, Microsoft announces the Microsoft Mastering Series. It's designed to jumpstart developer expertise in creating Windows-based solutions with the full line of Microsoft tools. As of October 17th, Microsoft estimates that 7 million units of Windows 95 have been purchased worldwide since the product's release on August 24th. And the approach of winner doesn't slow Microsoft down at all. MSN, the Microsoft Network Online Service, enrolls more than 525,000 members in its first three months of service. With the majority of members using MSN's full internet access, this makes MSN one of the largest internet service providers. And Bill Gates authors his first book, The Road Ahead. The book looks at how new technologies will guide the way we work, play, and live in the future. One of the key propositions in the book is that this will be a more evolutionary process than many people have suggested. Uh, that is, the PC will continue to get better, the internet will have more and more 
cool content on it. People will be connecting up at higher speeds through ISDN and, and PC cable modems. And so those are here and now things that companies are going after and there's a real business case for them. The ultimate where you connect up all the video devices, or as we say, information appliances in the book, uh, will take quite some time. I still believe that within a decade, pretty much that ultimate vision will be available to a lot of people around the world. Well, the Internet is evolving at quite an incredible pace. And it's, it's really fantastic because any weakness you can come up with in the Internet, uh, you can say there's dozens of companies that have been started up to try and get rid of that weakness and, and uh, turn it into a strength. And so the Internet is at critical mass. It's a phenomenon like the original IBM PC that grew to be a, a very, very central standard. So the, the eventual highway will evolve out of the Internet. So depending on how you're using your, your terminology, you can say that the Internet will become the highway. Now, there'll be some very qualitative changes between now and then. The variety of devices that are hooked up, the kind of material that are out there in terms of audio and video, the breadth of material, the ease of interfacing with it, the idea of agents helping to find things, the idea of user customizability, uh, the idea of security and directories and transactions, all of those things will have to come into play. So the, the highway and the internet are, are tied up together and uh, the internet is, is a key reason why the highway will happen but it it won't look like what we have today when it it all comes together and before the year ends Microsoft releases the final version of Internet Explorer 2 for Windows 95 on November 27th and finally on December 14th the company makes a major media move when Microsoft and NBC enter into a 50-50 partnership to create two new businesses, a 24-hour news and information channel, later known as MSNBC, and an interactive online news service distributed to the Microsoft network. This is NBC News at Sunrise. This is Today with Ann Cullen. With Brian Gumbel and Katie Curry. From NBC News. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Date Live with Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips. This is Meet the Press with Tim Russert. President and Chief Executive Officer of NBC, Bob Wright. Uh, I would also like to say a special uh, a good evening to uh, uh, Bill Gates, the uh, founder and CEO of Microsoft, who is uh, live uh, in Hong Kong in our NBC uh, news studio. And Bill, uh, welcome, welcome to uh, this uh, wonderful event. But this is truly uh, uh, one of the most exciting things I have ever been involved in, and we're at the very, very beginning, which really uh, makes it uh, uh, a powerful uh, message for all of us at uh, NBC and Microsoft. Uh, today, NBC and Microsoft, uh, leaders in news and technology, are coming together to create news for the next millennium. As you will see today, our plans are long in specifics and represent a unique combination of content, technology, and distribution. Bill? I think one of the, the great things that is illustrated here is this world of new media will require some uh, unique partnerships. And we're very excited to be working with NBC. Uh, over the last six months, we've been impressed with the depth of news capability that NBC has in its various operations. And those will all be brought to bear on the two new ventures that we're announcing here. What you see behind me are C-130s that are tuning up and getting ready to lift off for Tuzla, lifting off elements of the 1st Armored Division, of course. We already have people on the ground for that very important story that will draw the attention of the world over the next year or so. 
And I think that this story, more than any other going on right now, represents both the frustration that we feel and the enormous potential in this business. You know, for the last 10 years or so, we've been able to demonstrate anywhere in the world when a big story happens, we can quickly move in technology and people and get that story on the air. The problem has been, of course, that we only have the two hours of today and 30 minutes of nightly news and NBC Dateline in which to put that. Now with a 24-hour news channel, it'll be much more exciting, much more gratifying for us and for the viewers, I think. Some things will not change, of course. When a big story breaks in a hostile place like this, the working stiffs will still be out in the elements and the executives will still be in the temperature-controlled studios. <laughs> and in New York. Bill, you and I have been talking about this informally, conceptually, for some time now, and this is a very impressive undertaking that we're about to jointly engage in, but it's really just the beginning, isn't it, of an extraordinary expansion of this universe of communication and information. Yeah, there's still a lot to learn, and one of the wonderful things about the interactive is that we'll be getting feedback from the users every day to help us make it better and better. It seems to me, Bill, that one of our big challenges, both you at Microsoft and those of us at NBC News, will be to shape and to give form and to give definition, if you will, to all that news and information and communication that's out there in that vast cyberspace. Yeah, the idea of seeing the important news and having it edited for you, and yet being able to find the things that you've got a particular interest in, in Balancing those is one of the, the areas where we're going to have to break new ground. Bill, getting back to another discussion that we've had over the years, now that we're formally partners, can we send you a television set so that you can use one on a regular basis? I promise I'll watch it. And while Windows 95 was the big Microsoft news story of the year, the bigger story was the way it affected Microsoft's bottom line. The 1995 fiscal year end sales total was more than $5 billion while the employee headcount reached a towering 17,801 people. But now that Windows 95 was out, how would Microsoft stay dominant in the war for web supremacy?